Just when you thought things couldn't get more disturbing, Hiro Shishigami makes the declaration that he's going to kill every single citizen of Japan. And you know what's really scary? He might just do it. This episode of Inuyashiki can be summed up in two words. Fucked up. This was a highly disturbing episode of Inuyashiki, and that's saying a lot as currently Inuyashiki has got to be one of the most viscerally violent shows that I have ever seen. Not so much in the overall gore factor, but just in the overall body count and how incredibly realistic all of it is, despite the fact that this is a series about freaking cyborgs. Really, this entire episode just made me feel really uncomfortable, and I imagine that's what its overall purpose was. Hiro Shishigami has officially become one of the most despicable anime villains of all time. There is no saving this character, he is not going to be reformed, he is simply an evil entity that must be stopped. When is Ichiro Inuyashiki going to act like the hero of the series? Almost waiting for him to actually go after Hiro is one of the most tension-filled things about this episode right here. And I'm not even talking about the ridiculous and over-the-top massacre or even the airplane scene. Oh. My. God. This episode almost turned me off on the series, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I'm all for a super dark story that's super disturbing and even filled with some very gory details. But, man, this episode just evoked some really raw emotion from me that I didn't expect to see from the series, and it was like equal parts disgust and equal parts just ridiculous over-the-top entertainment value. Entertainment value in the sense that I don't get joy out of seeing all this terror, but just the overall spectacle of it and seeing how far Inuyashiki has gone since the very first episode and how in many ways it was almost sort of like a bait-and-switch. The first episode of Inuyashiki is surprisingly pleasant despite the very grim subject matter, but it was basically about a guy who got a second lease on life and he happens to be a really standout person and he's kind of a hero at the same time. And then in the second episode they introduce Hiro and as even though the series is called Inuyashiki, it really is the series that belongs to Hiro at this point. They've been spending the most time with him. He's been receiving the most amount of development and which is to, which is kind of funny actually. He actually hasn't had that much development. He's been a crazy psychotic killer since the beginning of the series. He was just given the tools to play out his most wicked fantasies. And it's gone beyond the point of him simply just wanting to reclaim his humanity by killing people and getting a thrill from it. He has turned into this autonomous killing machine that watching him in motion is just terrifying. This was a scary episode, not in a boo kind of way, like with stuff popping out at you, but just for the overall violence of it all. I'm not even sure I can fully recommend this anime series anymore unless you were just really hardened to this type of stuff and almost slightly desensitized. Like, let's just talk about this episode right here, which was surprisingly simple. Basically just Hiro saying that he's going to kill everyone in Japan, every single person. And he immediately starts doing so by going into the smartphones of people. And whoever's using them, he just shoots them right through the head. And he makes a declaration that each day the body count is going to grow higher. First day, he kills 100 people. It is messed up, to say the least. Next day, he says he's going to take out a thousand. The entire scene of him taking out all of these people in Shinjuku is just so disturbing looking because there's nothing these people can do. They're running in multiple directions. They have their phones in their hand. They have no idea what's going to happen. And boom, you just see them all falling with blood exploding out of their heads. It's a very, very disturbing image and really is sort of like that first warning that, yep, Things are about to get really messed up. And while all of this is going on, Ando and Ichiro are listening with their phone and trying to counteract that by telling people to not use their smartphones, but he's able to go through the televisions as well. It is just unreal, to say the least, to be perfectly honest. And it was really that moment where I'm like, 
I just see no more hope for this character and simply he must be stopped. And I was waiting for that moment when Ichiro was going to come in and it never actually happened. I'm actually angry at Ichiro for not actually going in there and owning up to his powers. I mean, think about it. This is some freaking Uncle Ben stuff. With great power comes great responsibility and he's going to have to learn that the hard way. A lot of people have already died. It's time for the old man to get in there and stop this freaking psychopath. But maybe the final act of this episode is going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back, as in the middle of the episode, we're just suddenly introduced to some brand new characters that we've never seen before, who are at an airport, getting on an airplane, they focus on this one woman who can't wait to go see her family again, she's sitting on the plane next to this American father and his baby who's crying, and she actually gets us to stop crying with this little cute cell phone video that she has. Now, this of course ends up being a very, very big flag that something bad is about to happen. And it does. Because Hiro Shishigami is able to use his power to hone in on the telephone, find out where this airplane is, brings it directly into the city, and crashes it right into the streets and buildings, presumably killing everyone on board and all of those unlucky who are around for the crash. This scene itself is one of the scariest things that I've seen from the series for how realistic it was and how it was handled. And let's be honest, guys. This brought to mind images of September 11th, 2001. As an American, it's an image that I'll never forget. I was old enough to experience all of the terribleness around it when it actually happened, so I had a firm understanding of it. And because of that, I'll always remember it as one of the greatest tragedies in American history. And there are a lot of them, trust me, they still continue to this day. But this right here was just such a stark and terrifying image that I like had to like stop the episode for a second, turn it off, and like ask myself, why am I even watching this series? What do I get out of it? It, it honestly makes me feel kind of bad and miserable sometimes. But really I'm watching it to this point because I want to see this character stopped and I want to see justice dealt. I want to see what Ichiro Inuyashiki is actually going to do about this. And there's no way that he's not going to get involved at this point, as this was easily one of the craziest things that I've seen from any anime series, and truly paints Hiro Shishigami as one of the most scary villains of all time. So, what's the rundown on this episode of Inuyashiki? This was a great episode, but it was also a hard episode to watch for how intense it was. Um, if I only had, like, one complaint with the episode, it's that maybe the animation could have been better at times, it could have been a little tighter in some situations. Other than that, the overall episode itself just really hit hard, and for Hero to be able to kill people through their cell phones makes him truly terrifying in a modern society where everybody is absolutely addicted to their freaking smartphones. It's insane. There's even a scene where Ichiro's daughter and son are complaining about the fact that they can't use their phones and they say they might as well be dead if they can't even use them. That's how addicted they are. So you can imagine how it really is going to freak people out in that society. And after his first killing spree, you can see that a lot of people don't even go out anymore. Nobody wants to go to work. Everybody's afraid for some odd reason. They allow children to go to school after something like that. It's crazy. Man, that's really all I have to say about the episode. Just, if you're willing to put up with some really hardcore material and getting to see how it's all going to pay off in the end, I suggest the series. Just uh, be prepared. It, it, it's, it's hardcore stuff. This is some intense anime right here. And like I said, it's not so much the actual visuals of violence so much as is the, the, the scale of it and more of what you don't see. Like, that, that whole scene where that airplane is coming in in that city and you see it from different angles, you see different parts of the airplane behind the buildings as it's making its way slowly down, and then you get that big final panning shot of the city and you just see that massive explosion, just, man, it's messed up. I think it can all be defined by one word by that one dude who was seeing it for the very first time. His word was shit. Yes, shit is going down. There's a giant fan and lots of shit heading right towards it. So, let's see how this series is going to wrap up. I really do pray that Ichiro is going to push himself to stop Hero. 
We've been waiting for that confrontation, which surprisingly has not happened in the series yet. And uh, I'm really interested to see how they're actually going to do that. Um, I can't wait to see if the giant meteor thing is going to be involved in the story at, at all at some point. And uh, maybe uh, other parts of the world might get involved in this conflict. I mean, people have to be noticing something that's going on in Japan with this mass killer who's killing people with the friggin' cell phones. I mean, come on. So, there it is. Crazy episode of Inuyashiki. Holy crap. But I did get a lot of entertainment value from it, and it was a very thought-provoking and crazy tough episode to watch. I know a lot of people are going to be off-put by the violence and just the, the, just the, the pure spectacle all of it, and they'll just say it's just bad material that no one needs to be seeing. But uh, still, if you can take it, watch it. It's good. For me, it's a 5 out of 5, despite the fact that there are some weird production values. And I also love that we still keep getting scenes with Ichiro's daughter, Mari. Is not only is she just a really fun character, but she's even warming up to the dog, Hanako. Yes, Hanako is actually probably going to be another important part of the story. Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, so there it is, my thoughts on the episode. Make sure to check it out, guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the episode, though. Please tell me all of them in the comments section below. Were you as disturbed by this episode as I was? Tell me what you thought about about it, if you liked it, if you didn't, what you hope to see from the rest of Inu Yashiki. Yes, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more anime reviews. And if you liked this video, why don't you hit that like button? I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay damn there, baby.